Hey, welcome to a new video. My name is Jessie. I have a very exciting product in my hands today. It's the Rare Beauty Positive Light Silky Touch Highlighter. I picked up three shades as soon as they launched on Sephora's app. I'm going to do swatches on my hands as well as my face for each of the shades. I'm also going to compare this new highlighter with their liquid highlighter in the same shade. And I try to do this with all of my reviews because most products, as soon as you put them on your face, they're gonna look good if it's a decent product. But for me, the test is really how it wears throughout the day. I hope this is helpful. We'll start with the shade Mesmerize. Ooh, this is a super cute little compact. It reminds me of the cream blush formula that comes in a little pot, but it is a bit bigger and it's circular and not like that oval shape. I'm gonna flip it open and there is the product. It looks absolutely stunning, very pearlescent, very glowy. So this product is an ultra silky powder highlighter that melts onto the skin for an effortless iridescent glow. That sounds pretty good to me. When I start to place my finger along the product, it is a very, very fine powder. So there is kind of one layer of mesmerize on the back of my hand. This is Enlighten, which is a cool champagne. You can see on this side of my hand there, definitely more of a silvery, cool toned highlight. And the third one I got is called Exhilarate, and this is a champagne gold. Wow, this is really, really pretty. I'll try to include another more close up clip of the swatches so you can see them a bit more clearly but I think the true test is really putting them on your cheeks and seeing how it blends in with your other products, with the natural texture of your cheek and how it kind of moves with the light. I'm gonna do Enlighten and Exhilarate side by side first, and then I'm gonna do Mesmerize Powder on one side and Mesmerize Liquid on one side, and this is what I'm gonna use to do my all day wear test. Now for application, I know Rare Beauty also came out with a little highlighting brush that looked kind of similar to a really fluffy eyeshadow brush. This is the BK Beauty A503, and that's really nice for very precise like highlighting along your cheekbones, in kind of the corners of your face, things like that. I also really like using this Real Techniques blush brush for highlighter because it's nice and fluffy, and I can just pick up a tiny bit of the product just on the tip and kind of work it along my cheek. The way the powder kind of is packed and the way it picks up reminds me a lot of the hourglass powders, which is a good sign because those powders are super expensive and one of my favorite things about Rare Beauty is that their products are not super, super pricey in comparison to other Sephora brands. This one retails for $33 Canadian, but I will say compared to the hourglass powders, this one is a bit softer. I'm just going to apply this on the tops of my cheeks along my brow bone. So there is that shade compared to the side with no highlighter. It does make your skin look dewy, even though it is a powder. I feel like my skin looks like a little bit wet. I'm just gonna wipe off the brush and then go in with the shade Exhilarate, which is a champagne gold. I'm going to apply that on the tops of my cheeks. Wow. So there is the shade Exhilarate. Very, very nice on the cheeks as well. And this is the part where I get super in my face to try to articulate the difference. I will say for my skin tone, Enlighten, so that cool champagne color does blend in much more seamlessly into my skin and into the rest of my makeup. Whereas with Exhilarate, you can definitely see kind of where the highlighter starts and stops. I have on a pretty neutral blush. I have on the Rare Beauty Blush in Hope, this one here, and I set my face with a matte powder foundation to get rid of the shine because I knew I was gonna be adding a lot of shine. And then I set my blush as well with this Laura Mercier color infusion in the shade Fresco, which is the most like neutral beige toned blush that I have. I think I'm much more likely to go with Enlighten on the day to day. But this is super pretty. I think if you have a golden olive neutral undertones, this would be your perfect shade. Okay, I've just removed that top part of my makeup and reapplied my concealer, my blush, my powder blush, and now we're gonna go into the two different formulas. 
I have the liquid luminizer, which I'll use on my left side, and then the powder one that I'll use on my right side. And these are in the same shade called Mesmerize. So the liquid luminizer is on this side, and the powder is kind of blended it over there. I know it's kind of hard to see it, but when I'm looking just front on and comparing the tones, they are the same. I would say the powder almost looks a little bit more warm toned, like there's more bronze that comes through. And a tip with this liquid luminizer is sometimes when I put it on directly on my cheeks and try to blend it out, it does lift and kind of melt off the makeup or blush that's underneath. So what I like to do, put some on the back of my hand, very similar to what I do with the liquid blushes. And then either take my finger and kind of pat it in a little bit and then go in with a brush to blend everything out. Or I'll just go straight in with the brush. Today I'm just, I do wanna show you what it looks like with your finger. So this does blend in pretty easily. You just have to be careful that it doesn't lift your makeup underneath. And I find working in really thin layers and building up the product helps with that. Build it up just a little more. And why I like this shade is because it kind of melts in with your blush the most seamlessly because it has those rosy tones. I'll often just go in with my blush brush and blend up the edges. This is the BK Beauty A507. So there's the liquid luminizer side. Now I'm gonna go in with the new formula, the powder, and put it on the right side of my cheek. Similar to that golden shade, this one does definitely show up on my skin as that bronzy kind of rosy undertone, which is nice if I already have on a rosy blush underneath or I'm wearing bronzer and there is that product to kind of blend in with the highlighter. Once applied, they look very, very similar on the skin. The undertones, the color is pretty much spot on. I think it's also a matter of preference. If you like a liquid formula, you like using your fingers to apply things, or if you like the versatility of a liquid product, for example, you can apply it just straight on. You can also mix it with like a tinted moisturizer or a cream blush and have kind of a hybrid product. I think the liquid one is for you. Whereas with the powder is truly like a topper highlight, one of the last steps of your makeup to give you that sheen. You can really control how much you put on and how pigmented you want it to be. And it's just better to travel with on the go, in your makeup bag, things like that. Also, once a liquid highlight dries down, it does not feel sticky or tacky or dewy. It dries down to a pretty semi-dry finish. And obviously the powder, it feels very weightless, but doesn't feel dry. It's not powdery or cakey or chalky at all, which is nice. Okay, so I think that's about all I have to say for now about these highlighters. It is almost noon and we're about to go out for lunch and hang out with a friend. So I will test how these two formulas wear and I'll try to check in right before I take off my makeup to see how they lasted. Hey, I'm back for my final update. I'm just gonna put on a little bit of a lip. By the way, this is the Dior Addict Lip Glow in the shade Cherry. I love, love, love this product. The first time I tried this, I got it in the shade Berry and completely emptied it within like a year because I liked it so much. Okay, so it has been a full day of wearing the new Rare Beauty highlighter in the shade Mesmerize on one side of my face and then the Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer in the same shade, Mesmerize, on this side of my face. In terms of looks, when I first put it on, I couldn't really tell too much of a difference. The main difference was obviously application, but when I looked a bit closer, I saw that the powder side just looked much more airbrushed and smooth compared to the side with the liquid highlight. I think this has a lot to do with the formula and the application. With the powder, it's a very, very fine powder. I kind of compared the texture to the hourglass powders. Like look how smooth and like iridescent that part of my face looks. I did blot my face a couple of times today and there was a little bit of shimmer that I could see on the blotting paper. The overall effect definitely stayed put and it looks just as fresh and just as glowy as it did pretty much when I first put it on. When you look up close, you can see the shimmer on your face. It's not like totally undetectable. You don't see large chunks of glitter or anything that looks really odd or jarring. It's a really natural kind of soft shimmer across your cheeks, if that makes sense. 
Now with this side, I got a very similar look. It didn't blur out my texture as well as the powder side did. That's actually a reason I don't reach for this honestly very, very often because I don't like putting it directly on my face and then blending it out. I do need to kind of put it on my hand and then dab it with my finger, trying really hard not to let any of the makeup underneath it shift. Sometimes you can see finger marks, so then I go in with my blush brush and kind of diffuse it out and sheer it out a little bit. So it's definitely a much more involved application process. I think this side just looked much more fresh and much more polished than the liquid luminizer side. I do still think this is a good product, especially if you're just a fan of liquid and cream products over powder, or if you like multi-use products. Out of the three shades that I tested out and swatched today, I do think Enlighten is my favorite one at the moment, and that's that cool champagne color. If you have a fair to light skin tone, even light medium, I think this would work well. It just added the most brightness to my face, and I think it works so well with any makeup look. The shade Exhilarate was also really, really gorgeous. The golden tones definitely are apparent when you have it on. I think this would look amazing for medium skin tones, um, especially if you have a kind of golden or olive undertone. And I think Mesmerize would really work across skin tones. If you have light to medium to medium to even deep skin tones, I think this would be so, so gorgeous especially if you're a blush girl and you like having those rosy bronze tones on your cheeks anyways, this just blends in really, really well with blush. If you have medium deep to deep skin tones, there is actually a fourth shade that I don't have with me, but it's called Flaunt. And it is a really gorgeous bronzy shade that would complement deeper skin tones so, so well. I think this test also confirmed for me that I prefer a really soft, powder highlight over a liquid or a balm or a cream highlight. My makeup style and the products I use already do tend to give me a bit of a glow, especially my sunscreen and then any tinted moisturizer or the e.l.f. halo glow, which I love. Like products like that already kind of give me a glow. And with my highlighter, I really just want it to be a very precise and clean touch of highlight and shimmer and i think with the powder i can just achieve that much more easily and without adding to like the many cream and liquid products that i have going on i hope this was helpful if you're trying to decide which formula is right for you or if you're wondering about the differences between the shades thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye